I'm John Bowden. Here's part one of our very first interview with Gilmore of Triumph. This is Rock History Music. Remember, the entire interview will be on our Canadian channel. If you want to get right straight to the whole thing, there'll be a link at the very top of the description of this video. As uh, most of you know, I've talked to Rick Emmett, I think about seven, maybe eight times in the past. We spoke with Mike Levine in the last year twice, but I've never had Gil Moore and really enjoyed talking to him. He's a real nice guy, one of my favorite Canadian drummers. And here's part one of our interview with him. By the way, Classy moved to, to ask Steve Wozniak to... Uh, to uh, introduce you guys at the US Festival. You know, uh, did you say how did that happen? Well, although that was, I thought that was a very classy move that you you came up to oh, him. Oh, oh. You know, and you basically, I, I remember that that kind of that kind of tugged me a little bit. I remember going, you know, there's I, that's an arduous thing to put one of those machines together with so many moving parts, right? Uh, and he was like a kid, you, like you brought him right back to why he does what he does. You know, I mean, beyond the computer stuff, but. That was a nice moment, man. Well, thanks. Well, you know, well, the backstory on that was so, um, you know, the the clash were uh, making these comments. Like I met Steve early on, and I knew what kind of heart he had. And he has a heart as big as all outdoors. He has a heart as big as the US Festival. And he, uh, you know, the clash sort of took advantage of this as making making false statements about him that were that just made me disgusted. And they were they were kind of coming down the, the road of, oh, this guy's a corporate pig. You know, he's blah, 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 blah. Just bad mouthing him for absolutely no reason. The truth of the matter is, Steve is like, and he's he's been a lifelong friend. He's still my pal. He's like, he's Steve's like a big kid. He he threw a party. He didn't do it to make money. He he's he lost a fortune. Like there's no way he could make money. He he built the facility basically from uh, at at Glen Helen Park, like moved with earth graders and all this kind of stuff. And uh, you know he spent a fortune on all the bands and 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 so on and so forth. They didn't uh, control the security that well, so you know there, it was impossible. There's so many people there. A lot of people got in for free. Um, he had this idea that us was and it's really interesting that we're in this horrible mess right now with Russia killing so many people in Ukraine that his idea at the time was to try to engage you know kind of the world inside a mu that's why there was 3 days and they were different genres of music and pull everybody together and he particularly had 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 uh, his eye on on Russia, because he felt like, you know, if we can bring America and Russia together through music, and uh, he, you know, he had one of those Steve Wozniak, uh, and I can't remember whether it was related to satellites, or I, I'm pretty sure it was satellites or something, it was in the, in the infancy of the technology to somehow connect, you know, the countries and make them sort of, uh, you know, share the music uh, journey, if you will. I don't know that he was altogether successful with that aspect of the US Festival, but that was the vision behind it. That's that's what he was trying to do. And uh, so the reason that, um, uh, you know, I, I I ended up talking to him saying, like, you know, you did, you've done a great thing here. And and these guys uh, bad mouthing you from the clash, you know, should take two weeks off and then quit. These guys are jerks. And I said, I won't hear about it. I said, I'll talk to the press and I'll tell them the truth. So that's how we kind of bonded a little bit. And that's why I said, hey, come on on stage and, and introduce us because, you know, I, I think, you're, uh, I think you're, you're a great guy. And I'm not listening to this garbage that's being spun uh, for their own purposes. Well, let's talk about, let, let's, let's continue with that. I, I'm, uh, I'm always curious about family dynamics. And Gil, as you can understand, half the people I talk to, I'm 62. Half the people I talk to have at least 10 years on me been in radio 39 years so i've interviewed freaking everybody in canada and a lot of in the us and europe but half only half of them and i'm i'm being generous when i say that say did the parents get it obviously your parents did or your dad did but how how was that as a kid growing up being a rocker and a drummer i know i've got one he's 18 um how was that for you how did how did the family take that well you know when you're a kid uh, at least if you were me, you take a lot of things for granted and you don't realize until you're older 
that you did. So for example, in, in my neighborhood, my parents would let the, my bands practice in our house. None of the other parents would, but my parents would allow it. I can remember when we got a keyboard player and uh, of course, it's funny when you say you got a keyboard player. Yeah, but when we started playing for instruments, so your keyboard player meant that his parents had a piano in their house. So the only way we could practice, my, my mom was a pianist and uh, she had a beautiful Heinzman piano in her living room. And she said, well, you can practice in the living room. You got to be careful. I can't, when I look back on that, I'm like, my parents let my band practice in the living room. Are you kidding me? Who would allow that? They had a rule about me practicing drums because when I got hooked on drums, it was every single day of my life. And it was nonstop noise, of course, coming from our basement. And uh, they had a rule that I could practice from when I came home from school until dinner. And then I could go right back after dinner and start up again. They would go into our den, which was at the rear part of the house, turn the TV up to warp 11 and shut the door. And it was lights out at 8.30. 8.30, I had to stop playing drums. So I was playing drums from, you know, I get home from school about, I think, 3.30, 3.45. I'd be playing right through to 8.30 every single day. And on the weekends, it was kind of Katie bar the door. I could do whatever I wanted on the weekends. So, uh, yeah, they, they were incredibly understanding and supportive beyond uh, anything you can imagine. But, but as I said, you know, I, I kind of thought, okay, this is how it is. You just take it for granted in a way. I mean, you do get to see the other parents that are not the same way, but you know, are you really grateful at, at, at that young age? Not as grateful as when you're, when you're older. It, it, it's like hockey practice. I remember when, when my dad passed away and I was at the hospital and the first words that came out of my mouth to the nurse was, he took me to hockey practice at five in the morning. That's, I, I don't know where that thought comes from, but if you can just imagine, you know, he, he would get up and he, you know, he would, he would drive me, he would drive the neighborhood kids, you know, that that's, and then there'd be other fathers, of course, who wouldn't get up at five in the morning, who wouldn't drive the neighborhood kids. So as time goes on, you know, you just have more and more respect and more and more and more, uh, you know, uh, thankful, you know, thankful. I, I have a lot of kids in my school that have, that have good parents. And I have a lot that have poor parents. And I always, whenever I'm doing mentor sessions with the younger kids that have problems at home and so on, I say, look, you don't get to pick your parents. It's something that happens to you in life. So not everybody gets, you know, not everybody gets a great, uh, you, you know, they get the, some of, somebody's going to get the short, short straw, you know, at a certain point. And, uh, and, and that's unfortunate because, you know, all kids deserve to have a shot and, and not every kid does. Make sure you comment on our videos, like our videos. We love it when you do. It really helps them perform Share them on any groups you may be part of and subscribe to our channel. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.